Learning Block 3, Warehousing Operations. A warehouse is a place in which inventory is held for certain periods of time. So in the last learning block, we learned about procuring materials. And so warehousing operations is the next step in receiving, storing, and working with what we've purchased. Thus, the primary objective is to provide excellent and efficient customer service at the lowest cost possible. In this learning block, the learning objectives include understanding the difference between a warehouse and a distribution center, the, their characteristics, and the various operations that you'll see in a warehouse, along with the typical shipping documents. Virtually all industries can use warehousing services, although there are more often for companies that plan to store their products for longer periods. Some sectors that rely on warehousing operations include chemical, electronics, medical, construction, and retail. Warehouses act as an interim staging location for the things that we procure. For example, manufacturers use warehouses to store their products that are going to be used in production, and they can be located next to the manufacturing facility. Whereas importers direct products purchased overseas into seaport warehouses. Warehouses generally provide basic functionality for the receipt of goods, storage, retrieval, and prepping for shipment. Now, when we take a warehouse and we incorporate some value added services, such as cross docking, marking or labeling or some light product assembly, then that turns our warehouse into a distribution center. Walmart is a good example of a distribution center. Um, they've got food storage and they can include distribution where a product needs mixing. Um, in addition, these products uh, will then get put onto a truck and eventually delivered to the grocery stores. Another example is the Amazon Fulfillment Center. These have fast turnaround and order fulfillment times, in particular with e-commerce businesses like Amazon. In these fulfillment centers, orders need to get filled quickly for businesses and consumers. Let's look at some of the characteristics, right? So with warehouses, all types of businesses use warehouses to store and manage products. And in order to be efficient, many of today's warehouses use sophisticated technology and systems, whether it's barcodes on pallets, automated storage and retrieving systems, or inventory management computer systems. Warehouses can store equipment, raw materials, excess or obsolete inventory, and work in process inventory. And typically the length of storage is more than a year. Whereas, as I mentioned before, distribution centers have higher turnover. And so um, it is a variation of a warehouse that serves to redistribute products to wholesalers, retailers, or consumers. So with this higher turnover, the inventory in our distribution centers tend to be in the facility for shorter periods of time. Some examples of different um, centers are retail distribution centers that distribute to retail stores, order fulfillment centers that distribute goods directly to consumers, and a cross dock facility doesn't really store very much, at least not for long periods of time, but rather products are coming and going and getting um, put together before they get sent out. A warehouse management system, which acts like the brain that manages warehouses and distribution centers, guides and optimizes product storage using real-time information about the status of warehouse space utilization and product turnover. For example, if a product is slow moving, the WMS will direct workers to put those slow moving products out of the way so that the faster moving items don't get slowed down. And then the WMS also monitors the movement of products throughout the warehouse um, if items need to be moved, and then they figure out the appropriate physical warehouse layouts using information technology tracking systems and managing communication among areas like receiving, storing, and shipping. Now we're going to dive more deeply into each of the operational areas in a warehouse, specifically receiving, storage, order fulfillment, and preparation for shipment. Receiving is when product is moved from transportation vehicles into warehouses and entered into inventory. Now, there is a specific time and date that's scheduled for carriers to unload in order to make sure that it's smoothly dropped off amongst all the various vehicles that are coming and going. The product gets moved from those vehicles into the warehouses. You'll often see trailers or containers getting backed into specific unloading bays. Documentation or paperwork is then transferred and products are inspected for damage. Just like when you order something online, 
There's often paperwork that comes with your um, goods and then you're checking to make sure that you got what you were supposed to receive and that it's not damaged. So as the products are unloaded, it gets counted for accuracy, labeled, and then sent to be stored somewhere in the facility. Again, any discrepancies or damage must be noted so that they can go back to um, the sender to address any issues. And then any products are staged or shipped or might be stored for a later ship date. Common equipment you'll see in a warehouse includes pallet jacks and forklifts that help move um, the plastic or wooden pallets throughout the facility. And common technology that you'll see that supports the WMS would be barcode labels, sometimes called license plate, um, as well as handheld devices that help keep track of information. The latest technology includes RFID. Um, so RFID tags are small and can be placed anywhere on the pallets or on the products. Um, and in some of the more advanced companies, they've got RFID readers um, throughout the facility. So as product is being moved around, those um, tags get scanned. So we're seeing a tremendous demand for RFID within all of our verticals, as well as our markets uh, throughout our customer base. Customers are trying to figure out how to make their operations more efficient and to be able to increase awareness of the edge data that they capture on a daily basis. That could be from receiving pallets in more efficiently, identifying products within the warehouse or the environment, as well as understanding what they've shipped and if it went onto the right truck. In the warehouse, RFID Technologies provides visibility to assets that typically were hidden in years past, both at the dock door when they're coming inbound for put away, as well as for when they're being picked up by workers doing a pick and collapsing that information into their systems in their warehouse management systems and management execution systems. With RFID, entire cartons, cases, or pallets can be inventoried in a single scan through RFID tags saving countless man hours and improving inventory accuracy at every touch point. RFID technologies can also help you run leaner with lower levels of inventory and less stagnant stock. A move to RFID means that every system, device, tag, and worker are elevated, giving your organization excellent visibility to accomplish so much more with less. Once goods and materials are received for inspection, it comes with paperwork to be checked against. There's the packing list or the shipping document uh, for every commercial shipment, and it'll list the items that were included in um, the shipment, uh, their codes or SKU numbers, which are unique numbers to those items, um, a description of the items, how many there are or the quantity, and any other additional information about the items. Sometimes there'll be um, like pricing information on the packing list, but not always. And most importantly is the bill of lading. It is a contract document from shippers that acknowledges the specific goods that have been delivered to the locations and received by the recipients. It's used to record and track the dispatch and delivery of goods, as well as the weight of each load. The bill of lading is also where you would know if you see any damaged or missing goods and a copy of that will be given to the carrier. The next activity or phase is storage, and this is where we put away our products in a specific clean and secure location so that it's easy to retrieve later on. Oftentimes, warehousing operations do not know how many times a product is handled, whether it's individual items, cases, or pallets, as they make their way from receiving to storage to picking to packing and finally to shipping. But we do know that the more touches that occur, the higher the inventory handling costs will be. As a general rule, each time an associate touches a product within the facility, it costs about $1 to $2, whereas each pallet touch costs about $3 to $4, and those numbers add up quickly. So one strategy, known as minimal handling, seeks to reduce the amount of times a product is touched or handled. Ideally, items are received, stored, and shipped out. Another approach is product demand. With product demand, a key element of proper storage is figuring out the demand for particular items. High demand items may never be actually stored, but rather put into outbound shipping areas ready to go, whereas low demand items are likely stored in the farthest reaches of a warehouse. It's helpful to classify these items from A to D, A being the fastest moving, often picked items, and D being the rarely ordered items. Storage racking is the most commonly used strategy. 
Since floor space is limited in a warehouse, being able to take advantage of vertical space increases the facility's capacity. Each rack will have a unique number, which allows everyone to know the exact product locations. Bins and containers are used when pallets need to be broken down into smaller units. Again, we assign unique numbers and locations, and bins and containers often have their own separate area than, say, pallets. Effective labeling systems reduce errors in picking, save time in finding items, and facilitate more accurate inventory management. Just think about your own storage or when you're packing to move, labeling your things makes it easier to locate as well. The third stage is order fulfillment. This process starts when orders are placed by customers. They may come from retail stores, other distribution centers, manufacturing organizations, or directly from end users. Orders from customers specify a unique part or item number, the quantity, color, other unique attributes, and a delivery date. When orders are received at warehouses, Pick lists are generated and the fulfillment process is initiated. The goal here is to be efficient, save time, reduce wasted effort, and lower costs. Let's talk about the various picking types used in warehouse operations. The name of the method can clue you into the approach. Manual picking is when you pick one item at a time and then bring it back to the shipping staging area. It's a very manual, time-consuming process. Order picking or single order picking is when you pick everything listed in an order and then bring it back to the shipping staging area. Batch picking occurs when you're picking for several different orders at the same time. Batch picking is generally faster than manual or order picking because it reduces the warehouse travel time, the walking back and forth. Another approach is zone picking, sometimes known as pick and pass. This is when the warehouse is divided into zones with pickers assigned to each zone and those pickers only pick the items from that zone for any order, and then they pass the items to the next zone or the next worker until the order is complete. Here's a quick clip of zone picking. This is zone one picking. Okay. Zone eight, um, scanning my first box. Start pick. You go to the location. We're going to go to 11301 z Zero one thirteen one C. I scan the product. It'll come on my screen. Ask you for two, and you're gonna put in box seven ninety one. Grab two. Scan the box. Go to your next location, and the box is done. When it says zone batch completed, it's completed. Some more technological approaches include voice picking, which can be combined with any of the previous methods on the last slide, and utilizes employees communicating through headsets about what items and quantities are needed for orders. Benefits include faster picking times and less errors. Another is the pick to light, where shelves have digital displays telling employees where and what to pick. Once items are picked up or selected, operators turn off the indicator light. Of these two types, voice picking is more cost effective as pick to light needs modules to be installed. And the last stage, preparing for shipment. So uh, this involves assembling orders into shippable forms. And it's the last chance to double check everything to see if you need to fix any order issues, make any changes, and make sure everything is correct. Some things to think about when preparing orders is the size of the order, the mode or method of transportation, any shipping requirements by the carrier, and if there's a need for refrigeration or safeguards of hazardous materials. Now it's very important for a warehouse to maintain its safety and cleanliness. 
the staging area is the zone where products come off or go onto trucks. And so this is often the busiest and most dangerous area in a warehouse or distribution center. One way to make warehouses safer is by ensuring that they're clean. And it's everyone's job to keep warehouses neat and clean. In addition, safety in an organization extends to the loading process. When preparing for shipment, remember that there are certain shipping documents that need to be prepared as well. We've talked about it before, but the bill of lading is the most important document in travels with the trucks. It is a contract that states the specific set of goods that have been received by the carrier as cargo to be delivered to a specific location and specific receiver. Shipping or packing lists, shipping manifests, and weigh bills are documents that itemize the complete inventory load. It provides more details about the products than the bill of lading. And lastly is tracking. This is accomplished by entering data into a transportation system with a unique identifier and actions along the transportation route are updated. You've got experience with some of these. You've likely looked up the tracking number of a package you're waiting on, and when opening up that package, you'll often find a packing list. So just a friendly reminder to take the weekly quiz before coming to class, and to submit this week's Cornell notes by Sunday of the readings, videos, and in-class discussions. If you want extra practice and extra credit on this week's concepts, make sure to check out the Quizlet link in Canvas.